Okay, so 25 years ago, I was going through perimenopause and I had all the signs and symptoms that Sally was talking about in the previous talk. I went right off having sex, lost any desire for any intimacy whatsoever. And my husband found love in another place. I eventually, after two or three years, decided enough was enough. And I went to start divorce proceedings. However, in those days, and I don't know when it was, you know, we were in the blame and shame game. And if you knew about the affair for more than six months, you couldn't use that as a, a reason for getting divorced. And so I said to him, well, you, you tell them that I've had an affair. I hadn't. And he did. But I know in my heart of hearts that had somebody offered me the chance to go through discernment counselling, feeling that there might have been a, a chance of saving the marriage, I would have taken that chance. That's not to say I don't love my post-divorce life. I've blossomed, I've come out of my shell, and the big bonus is I found a lovely new husband. But nevertheless, it does make you think, what would have happened if somebody had been able to talk to me or talk to the pair of us about what was happening? Like many people, I didn't realise I was going through perimenopause. I thought I wouldn't go through it till about 60 because, according to my mum, she didn't stop her periods until she was nearly 60. What she failed to tell me was that she'd been put on the pill and never stopped taking it. So I just thought I would follow her pattern. So it came as a, a real shock when I actually found out that that's what it was. But that was that was looking in retrospect, not at the time, because menopause was a dirty word. Nobody talked about it, not even the GP. So one of the things that I, I did was looking at in t over time this is not immediately once the divorce was over I was too busy um trying to concentrate on building a new career and I did just that I went from junior lecturer to senior manager in five years and one of the other reasons for getting divorced was because I'd just got a PhD and my husband felt um, undervalued, overshadowed, and that was another reason for him embarking on his affairs. But I was talking to him just recently, and we both said, what if? We're both very happily remarried, but how many couples are in the process of divorce and if they were offered the opportunity to talk to somebody who really understood what was going on, who was off offered them the opportunity to look at their problems and look at their role in the problems and get them to a level of understanding where they were confident and clear that they were taking the right path.
in, who knows what, what discernment counselling is? Not many people have heard about it. And so very recently I started to run a course, starting to call it discernment counselling. But as a group of students, they decided that it would be much better called couples clarity, couples clarity coaching. So what is couples clarity coaching? It's still asking people to discern whether they're on the right path. And discernment is the quality of being able to judge well and with accuracy and make the right choices. What we're offering them is an opportunity to gain clarity and confidence in choosing one of three paths. The first path is to stay as they are. And you would think not many people would, would choose that. But in actual fact, 10% of people that go through couples clarity or discernment counselling choose to stay as they are. They're mainly people that have been married for a long time and rather than spend their, their final years on their own, they decide that they will rub along. The second path is to go down the, the divorce route. But this time they would be doing it from a very different position. They would understand what the problems were. They would understand their roles in it. And they would have, have explored all the, the problems and come to a conclusion that perhaps those problems were insurmountable. But let's try to do it in a dignified manner. Don't, we don't have to be friends, but let's be amicable. So that's path two. Path three is um, choosing to work on the marriage. They've decided that the, the problems might have a solution. And let's, let's go through. So when would be the best time to, to choose discernment? or to choose to work with somebody to help them to see whether reconciliation is possible. On the landscape of divorce, obviously the minute anybody mentions the D word would be the best time to start thinking about, is this the right decision? However, But some couples that I've worked with have actually already sought legal or legal advice or talked to a mediator. But as long as there's some doubt in their mind whether they are doing the right thing, then there's still a chance and discernment counselling or couples clarity coaching might be just the thing to help them to make those decisions less painful for everybody. In every relationship that is on the brink, there's one partner who is leaning into the relationship and wants to preserve it at all costs, whilst the other partner is leaning out of the relationship and really thinks that they would be better splitting up. So many couples at this stage embark on marriage guidance. And whilst there is a place for it, the model that they subscribe to is that both partners are equally um, invested in making the marriage work. 
whilst one partner is leaning out, their investment isn't as big as the leaning in partner. And therefore, what is the, the chances of success? What we find from research that's been done over in the States, and we can't talk about in the UK yet because at the moment I'm only I'm the only um, certified discernment counsellor hopefully by June we're going to have nine other people that can work in the same field but from the research in the states 60% of people that go into marriage guidance are leaning, leaning in or leaning out. And of those, 70% opt for divorce in the long term. After discernment counselling, those figures are reversed and only 30% end up getting divorced because they've made a commitment to spend at least six months working on the problems with help, with guidance, with divorce off the table. One of the reasons is that I'm sure you've all seen or heard about the, the grief cycle. It's normally ap applied to bereavement but it can equally be as applied to um, divorce. And the leaning out partner may be so much further on in the grief cycle, then especially if they've embarked on, a, a, on an affair, they may be at the stage of acceptance that the relationship is over. Whereas the leaning in partner, who may have only just found out, or may have only just been told, I'm not in love with you anymore, may be at the, still at the shock or denial stage or even at the anger stage. Certainly the furthest on they're going to be is at the bargaining stage. So that's one of the, the reasons why marriage guidance or, or couples counselling isn't successful is because these people are at very, very different stages in their emotional journey. A survey of um, collaborative lawyers that I conducted, and it, it mirrors the, the survey that was done over in the States, shows that anything between 10 and 30% of couples if offered the chance to look at their relationship and um, try to reconcile, said that they would. That's not to say that they they wouldn't eventually, you know, go down the divorce route, but at least they would have been given a chance to talk through their problems to see whether there was a solution and what their role in that problem was. So couples clarity coaching, I see as the bridge between divorce and marriage therapy. And it's helping people to come to an emotional decision that is the right one for them as individuals, for them as a couple, and for them as a family. Whichever direction they end up going, they're in a much, much better and a much stronger place than they were before the Couples Clarity Coaching. They are more confident and clear that they are making the decision that is best for everybody. So as I say, 
path one is stay as they are, or I like to call it makeup. And once people have gone through couples clarity coaching, even if they decide that they're not going to commit to therapy, they're not going to go down the divorce route, they're going to stay as they are, they're doing it with clarity and confidence that they can make it work. They may live parallel lives, but at least they know that they are, they've talked about it, they both understand exactly where they are. The second path I'm calling divorce with dignity or to continue the, the rhyming theme, the breakup. And what we can do is, as most of the, or all, all the couple people that are training as couples clarity coaches are qualified divorce coaches as well, then they can help them to understand the process of divorce because so many people go into it not understanding it, all the nuances of it they don't understand what mediation is they don't really understand what the implications of getting divorced are on parenting etc the third path which i'm calling shake up asks them to commit to six months of therapy with divorce off the table. And part of that, the shake up bit, is going through an agenda for change, an agenda for personal change, an agenda for relationship change. And at the end of the couples clarity coaching period, they know exactly what needs to change because that is where we're working with the most intensity. So couples clarity coaching is a short term process. It's between one and five sessions. We never say it's five sessions when they're starting off. We all say it's between one and five sessions because each time we ask them to make a decision, do they want another session? And 99% of people say yes. The big difference between couples clarity coaching and um, marriage guidance or couples therapy is that it's very forward looking. It's getting them to look at themselves and the relationship in the future. One of the big differences is that the deepest work, the most um, pressing and, and challenging questions are done in individual sessions. At the end of each individual session, they come back and they summarize to their partner what they've been talking about. They will make some disclosures to the coach that they may not have been able to express properly to their partner. But because the coach is supporting them and helping them to formulate their, their answers, helping them to improve their communication. For the first time, they may be able to talk through the problems and their own roles in those problems. Because one of the things we do is help them to look at the other person's perspective. And that might be something that they're doing for the very first time. So couples that decide to go down route two and break up with the new no-fault divorce laws, 
we can help them to do it in a much more dignified manner. We encourage them to take a much more collaborative approach than they might have done otherwise. Working either with a mediator or with a collaborative lawyer or using the new one lawyer, one couple approach. In doing so, that encourages them to be much more collaborative, much more amicable and ending up with a, a much more dignified approach and a much stronger family at the end of it. Because they're going to be talking to each other right the way through. Yes, there may be some ups and downs when they come to talking about pension sharing, etc. But because they've had their communication improved, it's bound to rub off onto the divorce process. If they choose path three, it means that they really are going to have to work hard and shake up the relationship, shake it out of the doldrums that it's been in. We ask them to commit to up to six months of help, whether that's with a marriage guidance counsellor, a couples therapist, or doing a course like the one that I offer, the Marriage Makeover Mastermind. The main thing is that we say divorce must be off the table for this length of time, so that they are giving themselves the best chance to find solutions for the problems that have been occurring to find a deeper understanding of each other to be able to improve communication improve their connections looking back on the good times not the bad times planning the future together in a very different way to the future that they might have had without help. So if you want to know more about couples clarity coaching or about divorce coaching, please do get in contact. Any questions? <laughs>